Today we're going to speak about the science of emotional mastery. Welcome to the session. It's so excited to have you guys here. And this is a topic that I'm so passionate about. I'm passionate about all the topics that I'm speaking about, but when it comes to emotions, when it comes to mindset, when it comes to the specific idea of emotional mastery, this is something I'm very passionate about, and not just because I'm passionate about the topic, not just because I think the topic is um, necessary, but it is something that I had to deal with, like, um, well, a lot of times in my life, and, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done, because emotional mastery is not something that, you know, you just, you just do it once, or you do it twice, and you've mastered it. It's something that you're going to do your whole life. So I do believe this, this message and this information is very important so thank you all for watching thank you all for being part of this and i want to thank everybody that's contributing financially to theonos we are we are not just on camera we are also off camera we are helping a lot of people with their mindset with their emotions where we combine psychology and theology and um, your giving is really helping us to continue doing it so thank you so much we are we are trusting god for uh, monthly supporters financially in theonos so i want you guys to pray about it think about it and um, if that's you we will we will really um, appreciate your contribution a lot thank you so much and also thank you for liking subscribing we are trusting god to a th to go to a thousand subscribers and i also want to encourage you to share this message to other people because we do believe it's going to help them a lot. Okay, so the science of emotional mastery. Now, there's a, there's a series that I like a lot called Yellowstone. And I don't know if you guys ever heard of Yellowstone. I don't know if you've ever guys, you guys ever seen Yellowstone. If you haven't seen Yellowstone, go watch Yellowstone. For me, it's like one of the best series, if not the best series that's um, ever been made. Now, there's this guy called Casey Dutton. And um, his father, John Dutton, has this Yellowstone ranch. And what Casey does, or one of the things that he does is he tames wild horses. He takes the wild horses and he, and he rides them and to a place where they are more tame, to a place where you can easily or more easily ride this horse. And your emotions is like that a lot. Emotions is like this wild horse sometimes that wants to, that wants to kick you off, that wants to throw you around. And you feel like, you know, this is, this is not something I can control. This is not something I can master. But like Casey in Yellowstone, we have to get to that place where we say, listen, I'm going to learn how to master this horse. I'm going to learn how to steer this horse until I can ride it. Doesn't mean the horse is not going to become wild every single now, every now and then. Maybe, maybe the horse sees something in the external environment that makes him a bit nervous and you have to know how to ride and how to tame this horse. And this is the same with your emotions. A lot of times things in the external environment happens and we feel like you know things are getting emotionally a bit out of control but emotional mastery and knowing how to manage and master your emotions is a very important thing and managing and mastering your emotions is not just it's not just something where you're like okay now i get to a place where i don't feel the emotions anymore now i get to a place where i don't feel angry i don't feel fear now you get to a place where you know how to steer it and also a very important thing um, emotions are not necessarily good or bad and I or, or, or like in a sense of when I say happiness everybody think that's a good emotion when I say fear everybody think that's a bad emotion but emotions are, aren't good or bad it's like the law of polarity that we speak about a lot the law of polarity says um, there are two poles a positive and a negative pole of, on, a, on a battery for instance or cold and hot or high and low that's the law of polarity but one is not necessarily good and the other one bad um, it's more the way you use it, but both is necessary. So um, fear is necessary because fear protects you against against danger sometimes. If fear gets out of hand, it's a bad emotion. It's the same with something like happiness. A lot of the, a lot of times we make bad decisions or we rush into something because we are too happy. And in that case, um, we used happiness um, for bad. If I can say it like that but neither emotion is necessarily good or bad it's how you manage it it's how you master it that's going to determine whether it's good or bad now Robert Greene in his book mastery said the following he said mastery is not a function of genius or talent it's a function of time and intense focus applied to a particular field of knowledge so you don't have to be a genius to have mastery it's not a gift or a talent to have mastery but it's a function of time 
and intense focus. So it takes time, it takes patience, and it takes work to get to a place of mastery. Now, a lot of times we speak about success and also in the Christian world we speak about success and we speak about blessing and a lot of times we speak about success and we speak about blessing. Um, we think and we speak about finances and finances is definitely a very big part of blessing and a part of success and God wants you to be you know, financially stable, financially free. Um, I believe God even wants you to be, happy, to, to be wealthy if that's what you want for yourself. But when we, when we read the book of Proverbs, written by one of the, probably the, 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 the wisest person after Jesus in the Bible, and he wrote this thing about success, and, he, and, and, and Solomon wrote in Proverbs 16.32, and he said, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He who rules his spirit than one who takes a city. Now, when we think about success, we think about conquering, we think about achieving. And like I said, that's, that's good and that's great. But here Solomon comes and he says, he who is slow to anger, he who can manage his spirit, that's the successful person. And um, therefore we can say, according to Solomon, the wisest person in the Bible after Jesus, managing and mastering your emotions is one of the biggest areas of success. Listen to what Proverbs 16.32 says in the Passion Translation. It says, it's, it means, it says, patience means you are strong. Impatience means you are weak. What, is he, what does he mean by strong? What does he mean by weak? It doesn't mean you can bench press or shoulder press a lot when he says you are strong. But emotionally and mentally, you are strong if you can be patient. Emotionally in, and mentally, you are weak if you are impatient. Now, you will see a lot of people um, externally, they are very successful, but they cannot control their temper. They cannot manage and they cannot master their emotional life. Dr. Caroline Leaf said, I believe in, the in a future where the point of education is not just to prepare you for another useless job, but for a life well lived, which is a life of success. This is success in many areas where you can use your gift, where you can use your talent um, to have success in life, but also to use your mind, also to use your emotion, emotions, uh, use your patience, use your mental strength to live, a, to live a life well lived, as Dr. Leaf says, on the inside. Because on the outside, everything can seem well, but if we cannot tame that wild horse on the inside, it's always going to be a battle. Now, when it comes to ma mastering and managing your emotions, there's a myth sometimes, and I'm going to read you this myth. And this myth says, quick and simple explanations is necessary for the renewing of the mind and the health of the soul. This leads to false ideas and broken interpretations. These misperceptions lead to mismanagement of the emotion. So if you have a misperception about what managing and master the, mastering the emotions is all about. You're not going to manage and master it well. So the misconception or, and the misperception is that um, you can just pray it away. You can just think it away. You can fast it away. Somebody can lay hands on you and then you can manage and master your emotions. Now, please understand me correctly. I'm not against prayer. I'm for prayer. I'm definitely for prayer. I do believe you should, you should pray about your emotional life. I do believe you should pray about your emotional health every day. Um, but when it comes to this area of emotional mastery and managing your emotions, it's not something that you could, that, that's just a quick fix. It's something that has to be built and it's something that has to be built every day. You know, I've been doing this, you know, mastering and managing my own emotions for years now. And I just already feel that, you know, if I neglect it for maybe even a day or a few days, I can feel how that wild horse is coming back and I'm struggling to tame, tame my emotions. I'm struggling to manage my emotions, emotions just because there's a few days that I didn't build, that I didn't do what is necessary to do to manage and master my emotions. Romans 12 is two very, very um, um, familiar verse and um, rightfully so that um, 
that speaks about the renewing of the mind. The Bible says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <clears throat> Sorry. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So transformation happens in the mind. Transformation doesn't happen by accident. Transformation doesn't happen by a quick prayer. And again, I'm not against a quick prayer. God can do a lot of miracles in a quick prayer. But a lot of times people fill their mind, fill their emotions, mismanage their emotions. And then it's always just a quick prayer that has to get them out of it. No, you have to take time every single day, get your mindset, get your emotions to a place where it can be tamed. So how do we renew the mind? Two things that I want to mention that's important for renewing the mind. The first thing is meditation. Meditation is um, not, not something that's just used by, you know, Eastern religions, or it's actually something that can be used by, by anybody. But luckily we know that the Bible speaks about meditation, even, even from the book of Genesis, it refers to it. And a lot of times in scripture, sometimes it literally uses the word meditation. Sometimes it refers to meditation. But we do know that meditation is a, is a very, very important thing um, to God. It's something that we have to, it's something that we have to practice. It's something that is necessary. I believe just like the food we eat every day, meditation is a necessary thing. Otherwise, we're just going to, otherwise things are just going to, you know, go around. Nothing is going to be managed. Nothing is going to be mastered. Like that wild horse, you have to sit them, him down every day and say, listen, you're not leading me. I'm leading you. Meditation is an act of deep thinking. An act of deep reflecting. Think, I think when, when it comes to meditation, it's very important that things are, are quiet around you. But Dr. Joe Dispenza, somebody whose work I follow a lot, for me had the best definition of, of uh, meditation. And he said meditation means to become familiar with. To become familiar with. And I, and I also want to connect that to a, to a sense of self-awareness. Where you sit and you become familiar with yourself, your own thoughts, your own emotions, but not just that, uh, what you want to achieve in life, who you want to become. And that brings me to the second point that's very important here. It's, it's imagination. Now, your life is, 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 is run 95% by your subconscious mind. Subconscious runs 95% of your life. And the interesting thing about the subconscious mind is it doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality if you connect the right emotion to it. So it's not just about imagining, it's imagining and getting emotionally involved almost as if you already have it. Not almost, actually as if you already have it. So when you sit, when you meditate, when you imagine, see the future you want, become familiar with who you are and say, this is the person that I want to become. This is the future that I want to have and put it in your imagination. And as you meditate, as you imagine, as you deal with things that you say, listen, these are, these are some things I don't want in my life. As you do that, you will see how much you become transformed and how much you grow further and further. And, and, and the more and more you will master um, your mind and your emotions because the mind and emotions work together. The mind is electric. When you think, you send out uh, electromagnetic signals. And your heart is magnetic. When you feel, you draw things onto you. And that's, what, and that's what brain and heart or mind and heart coherence is all about, is to think and to feel, to think feelingly. When you imagine something, you get emotionally involved with it. Dr. Joe Dispenza said, how I think and how I feel becomes my state of being or my personality. And my personality creates my personal reality. So what is your personality? It's the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you act. Personality is not just something that you're born with. It's something that's shaped. And it's something that can, sh can, that can be shaped in a different way. The person I was 10 years ago and the person that I am today are not the same person. There's been a change in personality. There's been a change in personality because the way I think, the way I feel, and the way I act changed. And if you want a different future, if you want your life to go into a different direction, it's important to note that the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you act 
uh, need to change. And how do you do that? By waking up, meditation, imagination. Before you go to sleep, meditation, imagination. When you feel like that wild horse is coming um, out during the day, because it's not it's it's not enough just to you know meditate and imagine in the morning and in the evening. Through the day, you will see that wild horse, that bad emotion sometimes comes out, and then you have to stop. You have to say, listen. You're not leading me, I'm leading you. You're not taking charge, I'm taking charge. And I'm going to and I'm going to send you in the in the direction that I want to send you. The word the word emotion in the Latin animimotus means a movement in the mind. So the way you think affects your emotion. The word emotion also means energy in motion. So emotion is an energy and you can send that energy in the direction in the direction that you want it to go. Meaning your emotions doesn't have to doesn't have to overpower you you can manage it you can lead that energy in the direction that you want it to go and i want to finish with this scripture um philippians 4 verse 8 and this also as you as we as we read the scripture the scripture does speak about meditation but i also want you to add the word imagination because they go hand in hand because both is is, is leading to become familiar with something um, and, it, and it also might be something that you don't have yet, even if you don't have it yet, getting it um, into your imagination and as part of your imagination is a very important thing. Philippians 4 verse 8, the Bible says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So he says, meditate on the good, imagine the good. Now, so many things happen to us in the world, in our, in our external circumstances that causes us to get to that place where we think about the bad, when we imagine the bad. But every single time that happens, we have to take that thought capture and send it into the right direction and say, the Bible instructs me that this is also not going to happen um, accidentally. It's an instruction. You're not going to buy. You're not going to buy accident. Just think about the good. It's something that you have to purposefully do. As you do this, your life will change. Your your you yourself will change first. Your future will change, and this is how transformation happens when you can manage and master your thoughts and your emotions. Let me pray for you, Father. I thank you for every single person that watched this message. And I thank you, Father God, by this prayer that you will do what you need to do in the minds and the hearts of every single person, because we still are a people who believe in prayer. But I also thank you now in Jesus' name that they will do the necessary work every single day to manage and master their mind and emotions in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a part of this from Theonos. We love you and may God bless you and may all the favors of God be upon you in Jesus' name.